Ocasio T. Good morning, everyone, and today we are going to be reviewing a book that I literally cannot say enough good things for. This book is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Philosopher's Stone for everywhere but the U.S., apparently. And if you haven't heard of Harry Potter, I'm deeply sorry that you've been living under a rock for the past five years or so, at the very least. Anyway, this book was written by J.K. Rowling in 1997. And I was seven years old when I first heard about Harry Potter, obviously not in 1997. Um, there was a book sale at my school to celebrate the release of the fourth book in the series, Goblet of Fire, and the book sale was called Muggles for Harry Potter. Now, my dad convinced me to check out the first book, and I was seven, not really a big reader yet. I had read things like The Boxcar Children and The Magic Treehouse. And so my dad and I started reading this book together, and then I started reading it on my own, and then I couldn't put it down and it changed my life, and I have read it over 168 times. This is how much I love this book. Now, spoiler alert, um, it starts out in England with an orphaned boy being dropped off to live by with his aunt and uncle and by a strange but bearded man who can seemingly perform magic. Uh, there's also a woman in an emerald robe that can change form between a cat and a woman, and half-giant in a trench coat riding a motorcycle. This baby was Harry Potter. And as he grows up, his aunt and uncle, who can only be described by the opening paragraph of the book, which I will read for you right now. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people that you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious, because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. So... Throughout his youth, Harry shows signs of being unusual, and they attempt to stamp out this unusualness. They give him the smallest bedroom. It's not even a bedroom. It's cupboard under the stairs. Um, and they make him put up with his bullying of his older cousin Dudley, who they completely dote on. And they give him hand-me-down clothes and generally ignore him. It's all very sad. So, on Dudley's birthday, on the year Harry turns 11, one of the strangest events yet happens, and he manages to vanish the glass out of a boa constrictor exhibit at the zoo. Things only get stranger from there. Letters start arriving for Harry, which, for some reason, his aunt and uncle hide from them. And so they cross the country, county to get away from these letters, when delivered by the strangest ways, even on Sundays, such as being rolled up in half-dozen eggs and just dropped off at the hotel they're staying at. And so, eventually, they, Harry finds out the truth as the letter is delivered by the half-giant that dropped him off all those years ago, Hagrid. And Hagrid tells him something incredible. He tells him he's a wizard, and that he will has been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and will encounter all sorts of magic, including potions, transfiguration, charms, herbology, and a very small but strangely vicious dragon named Norbert. He also encounters a wizard sport known as Quidditch, which is played on broomsticks. For more information on Quidditch rules, see Quidditch Through the Ages, another book by J.K. Rowling. Or just read the books, that's also an option that I highly recommend. He also meets his two best friends in the world, Ron and Hermione. And along with some enemies, such as fellow student Draco Malfoy, Professor Severus Snape, and worst of all, the wizard who killed his parents, Lord Voldemort. Kind of a baddie at this point, which you'll find more about him in later books. The story is simple. It's beautifully written and engrossing. And it's the perfect gateway to reading book because it's very light and not, you know, too vocabulary heavy. And it teaches things like loyalty and courage and friendship and the difference between right and wrong, such as the discrimination of Muggleborns versus purebloods. Muggles, those who cannot perform magic. Muggleborn, somebody born to somebody who cannot perform magic, but is magic anyway. Pureblood, somebody who is born to an all-wizard family of at least three generations. And then there's half-bloods, which are born to one wizard parent and one muggle parent. It can create some awkward... Con awkward kind of conversations at the dinner table I expect when they find out. These will define things in Harry Potter, including the general conflict between discrimination of purebloods towards muggle-borns. A few things that might not appeal to you. The story is written in a very simple writing style. It's directed primarily at children. If you're reading really advanced books, you might be, you might be a little bit put off by the simplicity of the writing style. And fantasy isn't always for everybody, especially if it involves wizards and magic and stuff. But 
If you want a really good book for casual reading, I will welcome you with open arms to this world and it's going to be a fun ride. <coughs> I really think you should check this out if you haven't already and join me in the ranks of Potterheads. All right, next week we will be reviewing the second book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Any messages, uh, questions about the book, things you want me to address further, please email in the description. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, you are a fantastic person. Also, I'd like to say a huge thank you to my sister, Ray, for loaning me the book because mine has kind of disintegrated over the many years of reading it. So thank you, Ray. You're going to be on a video some point in the future. Love you.